Ah, ah, guys. Yo. It's fine. Nobody asked for your opinion, Gidget. <laughs> no one wants to know a dog's opinion on wrestling. <laughs> JYD is not here anymore. <laughs> I was about to say. Chalky <laughs> dog is not around. Road dog is not. How many dog themed wrestlers are there? The big dog. <laughs> oh, Top dog. I hope <laughs> you never hear that from Michael Cole ever again. Thank God we won't. It's your call. It is yard now. <laughs> <laughs>
He's barely holding it in at this point in time. But thank you so much. I wouldn't like the things that I do as much. And this is actually going this is going to shut him up. I wouldn't have met guys like No Shot, guys like Vass, uh, guys like Pete, all all the, all the friends that we've made. I wouldn't have made half of those friends if it wasn't for wrestling. So thank you Vince McMahon. Thank you for what you've done. We're going we're just going to move past all the negativity. Yes, we know there's lawsuits with we know there's things on on that's real good shit pal and everything else. We use that line quite often, but thank you Vince McMahon. Don't say anything else, Nash. Let's go into the cup. <laughs> oh, one more thing. We're not doing the game anymore. We're not doing the game. We're not doing the points game. We're literally just going to be out here talking about what we like. We we like wrestling. We like sweaty, half naked men in tights, and that's what we had to talk about. Okay, that didn't come out right, but anyway, you guys get it. <laughs> hey, that's my girl's band right there. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Word on Vince. I'm just going to get into no. this uh, game <laughs> right here. Actually, we're not playing the game anymore, guys. We're yeah. doing away with the game. It's out the window because... Just because we can, all right? You're just going to yes, enjoy the predictions that we're going to drop for you guys. We're going to talk wrestling. And I've got a, something special for you guys coming up. I think Jeremy and I are still in the talking phases, but we're going to do that rant that he wanted to do with a former member of the MJP. He's going to be doing it with me in the coming future. And we've got, I mean, we've got Clash of the Castle coming up. We've got freaking AW All Out. We've got watch-alongs. And, guys, if you want to join us on those watch-alongs or if you want to join us on one of the prediction videos, drop the comment down below. We'll invite you on as a guest. You can come in and talk wrestling with us, guys. You know, enjoy yes. the stuff. So if you're interested, and, and drop unlike it down Nash, below. And unlike Nash, I will respect your opinion. <laughs> yeah, he will respect your opinion, your wrong opinions, especially. Let me tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why you're wrong. Okay, that's that's what that's what certain certain, certain <laughs> Greek guy used. You know, we, we can't say names anymore because of legal suits, unfortunately. <laughs> Anyways. Let's get right into what we're here for. It is SummerSlam 2022. I'm going to run down the card real quick. Jeremy, you're going to give me your quick thoughts, and then we're going to jump right into this card. So, SummerSlam, WWE SummerSlam 2022 card looks a little bit like this. First up, we have Seth freaking Rollins versus Riddle. Then we got Pat McAfee versus Happy Corbin. Logan Paul versus The Miz, and those are the only three singles, non-title, those are the grudge matches, basically. There's no titles on the line. It's just straight up one-on-ones. Then we get into the title matches. You got the United States Championship on the line. Bobby Lashley, Mr. Headband, loves them over there. Bobby Lashley defending the U.S. title against Theory. We got the Tag Team Championships on the line. The Usos defending against the Street Profits with... Double J E double F J A double R E E double T double J F Jared as a special guest referee for this one. I've got a lot to say about that, but we'll get to it when we get there. Uh, we got the Raw Championship. <laughs> Young Belair defending against Becky Lynch, basically a sort of rematch from last year's SummerSlam and this year's WrestleMania. We got SmackDown Women's Championship, the new champion, the newly minted champion, Liv Morgan, as of Money in the Bank. Taking on the former champion, Ronda Rousey. Oh, sorry. Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And the Universal Championship will be contested in a much-anticipated last-man-standing match where the defending champion, the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, or as Michael Cole used to call him, the big dog, big Roman dog. Reigns, taking on Brock Lesnar, the beast incarnate, the alpha male of our species, as Pat McAfee likes to say. So that is the card, guys. Eight matches. I like it. I hope it stays this way. I hope it doesn't change. Jeremy, what is your thoughts on this overall card? Look, I'm excited for, for wrestling after a very long time. I mean, I'm excited to, to see where this is going. I know we've got some new people in charge. We've got um, some very interesting matches. I must... I must say off the top, um, I need to apologize to Liv Morgan 
and her fans <laughs> in general. I know I was a little bit negative about her the last time around. Um, she's shaped up. She's, she, you know, just in general. If I look at the card in general, okay, there's a few, there's a few repeat matches that that's that's on here. There's actually quite a few repeat matches on here now that I look at it. Yeah. But um, I'm interested. I'm genuinely interested in this one. Um, not just that. There seems to be some semblance of long-term booking happening again in in WWE. Um, and I don't know. Maybe it's just the money in the bank. Being being that wild card, that Joker in there, knowing that something could happen with that something, and with the last man standing match, um, yeah, we've, yes. we've seen these things go become really brutal affairs. So chances are we're gonna see we're gonna see a title change, um, regardless. Um, always excited to see Jeff Jarrett. I guess that's the. 90s wrestling fan in me coming out. Always excited mm-hmm. to see Jeff Jarrett. Um, and then the match that I think is going to be a show stealer, and we're not, we, we, there's probably two of them the, the Riddle, the Riddle Rollins one, and the McAfee Corbin match. I must be honest, Corbin and, and McAfee, I know you're not, you, you probably don't agree with me on this one. But McAfee and Corbin, I think the build for this is organic. It's actually probably one of the better wrestling builds that they've been. Think about it. They, no, they haven't gotten to the ring. They haven't had dueling mics like for 15, 15 weeks. Yeah. Ago. They've been jumping each other. They've been getting jumped. And that 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 spot on Friday uh, on SmackDown last week, absolutely. It it it's got a good ball. Um, yeah. Brock and um, Brock and um, an old <sighs> big dog. I'm I'm not sure what what we're doing there. We haven't seen Roman for a while, and um, I believe there's backstage thing going on with Brock at the moment. I'm not sure. I've heard I've heard some ridiculous things, but we'll go into detail when we're discussing that match. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's going to be yeah. interesting. It is going to be quite interesting. I'm actually looking forward to this card. It's not a bad card. There are a few matches I could have done without, but I'm really interested in seeing. Um, and there are matches, like you mentioned, a lot of repeats. And when we do get to the matches, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you will. I mean, both of you are going to make a that Mr. Nashville does not mince his words. He'll tell you yes, exactly no, how. <laughs> He'll tell you exactly how he feels. But yeah, like I said, guys, we're going to get into this card. And like I said, since due to recent exoduses of certain members, there's no more predictions game. So feel free to go into rants. Feel free to do your fantasy booking. Feel free to, to yeah. say whatever you want. There's no hold There's on. There's no how you feel. Don't hold back. <laughs> yeah, don't hold back. If you want to grind all in, if you want to say something bad about Vince, go ahead and say it. <laughs> Be Let's get right into- <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right into the first match. It is Seth freaking Rollins taking on Riddle. I'll go on first because I have always, and everyone knows that I've always been the biggest Seth Rollins fan. Ever since I saw him debut in NXT, when NXT rebooted back in 2012 and he made his entrance and he came out with his arms flailing all over the place, I was like, who the hell is this dude acting like he's having a over like seizure or something? Same way Hogan used to have that seizure when he was hooking up, except this guy was flailing his arms all over the place like he's a madman. And then I saw him actually wrestle and I was like, man, this guy is awesome. Then he became the first ever NXT champion. I watched his run through the Shield. I, I was probably the only guy who actually cheered when Seth Rollins stabbed Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose in the back with that steel chair. Because I, I, and I think it's because of the parallel that I've had with Seth Rollins, and I think this is a good time to bring it up, is when Seth Rollins actually, what people were saying, sold out and became a corporate um, sellout. Ah, nice. I, at the time... I like I like the I like the corporate the corporate version of Seth. 
In fact, I think the only version of Seth that I like a little bit more than that was when he was coming out week after week in like themed in his themed gear, like the uh, for the one Rumble he was in Thanos gear, and then he was in you not remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's and a being the co- and being the comic book nerd that I am, I I I don't know when Ray yeah. does when Ray does things when he puts on like. The, the comic book gear on and 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 you see these little tweaks here and there. I'm there for that, man. I'm there. <laughs> like I said, uh, but what? But don't you think it's it's gonna be weird with this match specifically, like with all the backstage heat that that Riddle and Rollins have? I mean, if if you follow them on Twitter or if you check any of the the news sites, you'll know that. Uh-huh. Um, Rollins and Riddle, well, up until recently, anyway, never really got on. Really, they never really got on, and I think there was a little bit of a sideways line that was thrown out on Twitter. I think earlier this week, uh, like I like am. as a, like as a played back to it, Riddle came out and said, "Not not Riddle, sorry, Rollins came out and said, I 'I don't, I've never liked Riddle.'" But even though we know that everything is squashed, we know it's been squashed for a while. But it's just like they're yeah. like stirring, like just stirring it just a little bit, just to keep it a little yeah. bit fresh. I like it. I like it. I do like when when it sort of blurs it. I hate though, what I must be honest, when it goes full on. Whatever it is that's like, if we do a comparison now with whatever happened with that last time that we saw MJF on AEW. Yeah, that, that felt that, genuinely uncomfortable. I like this when we blur the line just enough, just enough. Like riddle, riddle for me has always been sort of like touch and go. Um, I know I started watching NXT just as he was making his way over. Yes, I'm a pretty recent NXT guy. I've stopped watching NXT though. I don't watch NXT anymore. Yeah, 2.0 I is not why. 2.0 is definitely not for me. The black and gold guys, I wish I started watching it a little bit earlier. I yeah. I wish I started watching it earlier. I'm glad I got the tail end of it though, because that was good. That was really, really, really good. The I best part of black and gold, and you see where the takeovers, the matches they put on, the match card was just mm, too good. <laughs> and Rollins was Rollins, if I'm not mistaken, Rollins was the first NXT champ, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, so so the the build to this match has been interesting though, because now you've got he's basically Riddle feels like he's been courted by he's been courted by both Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, I'm there. Well, if it's got Kevin Owens on it, I'm there. Kevin Owens literally made the whole Ezekiel storyline seem interesting. Yeah. I, yeah think was, I think if it was anybody else, no. Not even a little bit. Yeah. So Kevin this, Owens has that magic touch for it. Kevin really Owens, as far it. as I'm concerned, Kevin Owens is the aromat of WWE. <laughs> if something needs some flavor, it needs a little bit of flavor, it needs a little bit of pep. <laughs> Kevin Owens is your man. <laughs> and that could make so much sense, especially when Owens does those crazy moves that he usually does, jumping off things. I'm like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know why I'm there for Kevin Owens. And I think that's one of the reasons why, even though the build for this match hasn't been for weeks on end, it's interesting because Owens is in there. Owens has literally come back this past week and instantly this match is, is now on the card and it's like, okay, Kevin Owens could come out. He could be involved in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Is, do we know if Randy is there, if he's involved? Might be not. I've got a feeling and this is going to tie in with, my, with how I think this match is going to go. Is going to go. What's going to happen is I, well, first of all, I'm predicting that Riddle's going to go over Rollins, right? And somewhere around, let's say, Survivor Series, TLC, Riddle is going to be elevated. And that's why I'm saying Riddle is going to go over. We're going to keep building his momentum. 
And I'm predicting that Royal Rumble 2023 will be Riddle's Rumble. And yes, I just planned that word in advance. It's going to be the Riddle Rumble. Because Riddle's going to win I that Rumble. I'm wrong. You know why you're wrong? Because Bill Goldberg's uh, going to come out in number 31 and win it. That's why. <laughs> it's going to be the first ever 31-man battle Royal Royal Rumble. <laughs> All work for the win. Man. Okay, well, okay. Whatever happens, I'm still going to say that Riddle is going to win the Royal Rumble and he's going to, he's going to, I don't know if he's, okay. Coming back to what I was actually saying, maybe Riddle doesn't win the Royal Rumble, but in the Royal Rumble, Randy Orton returns and tosses Riddle out. And we get Randy Orton versus Riddle at WrestleMania because I think the winner of the Royal Rumble, actually, now that I think about it properly, the winner of 2023 Royal Rumble is going to be Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is going to win that one, go on to the main event of WrestleMania, and also at WrestleMania is going to be Orton versus Riddle. That's where I think this whole thing is going. That's why I think Riddle needs to win more than Rollins because Rollins can take a loss and still bounce back. He's set freaking Rollins. But, but here's a question for you. Why does Randy have to be the heel? Why does Randy? Why does Randy have to be the heel? Can you really imagine Riddle as the heel? Yes. Yes, I can. Elaborate. Elaborate. Yes, I, can. I, I, I actually think that, that Riddle as a heel might make a better character. Look, we need to explore that. And I think what happens now with Triple H being, being more involved in things like that. And Stephanie being there. We're going to start seeing other aspects of characters as well. We're not going to just see the one-dimensional guy. Like the NXT guys. The NXT guys, you see, they came out. They were allowed to have, like, multiple ring gear and multiple ring entrances and things like that. They were allowed to do that and, like, experiment with that and see how it works. Now you just have that cookie-cutter guy. Like, yeah, stamp you out. And I think this match is interesting from like an NXT perspective, because you've got you've got Rollins, who was literally one of the, the the originators of the original guys on NXT, and then you yeah. got Riddle, who was also he, Riddle on NXT was amazing, awesome, yeah. And now you've got like late late black and gold NXT versus OG black and gold NXT. So it's actually yeah. for me, it's quite interesting. This match has this match has a couple different layers to it, I, and I think I personally I'm 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 there for that. I'm there for that type of thing. You know that. And I think another thing that I just want to mention of what you said about the cookie kind of thing, I I really hate these generic theme songs that they're having for the wrestlers recently. I want to go back to when we had real theme songs. Like I think the only theme song that's really fresh that's out there is probably Cody Rhodes theme song. Uh, yeah, the judgment day. Music. Yeah, like, music. I'll music. give you. I'll give you a prime example, right? You got <coughs> Raquel Rodriguez or Gonzalo. Oh. I'm not sure what they're calling her at the moment. Yeah, <clears throat> she came out Friday on SmackDown. I had no idea if that sign didn't go up to say. In fact, I thought at one stage, <laughs> I thought it was a. I thought I, I I sat on the remote weirdly, and I thought Desperado was was playing on another channel. <laughs> the ring music is okay. Look, like guys like Seth Rollins and things, we, we know their music because it's been around a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> and do you think that Vince's exodus has anything to do with the recent announcement that WWE is going TV 14 instead of PG? I think it's the perfect storm of things because um, if you look at his alleged conduct and then mm-hmm. the whole TV 14 thing, I think that has, that could have a lot of a lot to do with, with, with Stephanie now being um, the CEO and, mm-hmm. and Triple H being the um, in charge of the talent. Yeah, I think I think a lot of things are going to change and. TV 14, look, it's not going to change immediately. A lot mm-hmm. of people seem to think that the Attitude Era was 
going to take a while. Above everything. People seem to forget there were things like Kayantai that was happening. What the, yeah. yeah. Kayantai wasn't as good as you guys remember. You guys need to go <laughs> back and have a look at that. <clears throat> it, 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 it wasn't all good, guys. Choppy, the choppy. Era, the Attitude Era had, yes, maybe there was a few segments here and there that were interconnected and everything else, and it worked. Yeah, like me, young there, there were a few head scratches in there. Big Show's Big Show's father was dragged around behind a hearse. <laughs> Me Young gave birth to a hand. <laughs> and Al Snow was fed pepper steak. And you guys need to go and have a look at this. That attitude and it wasn't all good, guys. It wasn't all good. Yeah, there were a lot of good things and a lot of people were watching. But yeah, there was a few head scratches in there. Definitely. <laughs> so, who are you going with in this match? Um, no, I, 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 I agree with you. I, it just, I don't know. I don't know whether it's long term booking or whether it's just a one off match. But I mean, yeah, I, w- I would go with Riddle. I, w- I think Riddle works makes more sense on this one, though. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a one off. I don't think that it's going to carry over to freaking Clash of the Castle or anything. I think what's going to happen is, and, and I don't know if you noticed, this past week on Friday Night SmackDown, we had Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Yeah, that They're match is have... probably going over to SummerSlam. That match is probably going to end up on SummerSlam. Yeah, the, I, I actually think we're going to get Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre clash of the castle. Wait, it will make so much of sense. Wait, 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 wait. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. While we're on the uh-huh. match, while, while we've touched on it. Uh-huh. Why is it that we have weapon matches Apparently, Donny Brook matches, and then we, we we exclude certain weapons. It was like, do you remember when we had TLC, and then we had a chairs match where only chairs were legal? Do you remember tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs? Do you remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about the Singapore? Why would you matches? make a match? Why would you say? It's a no holds barred match. It's a Donnie Brook match. But you may not stab your opponent to death. <laughs> and since we're not in Saudi Arabia, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm glad. No, no, nope, no, beep that part out. Beep it. Beep it right there. Stop it. Censored. <laughs> WWE uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we're on the same page with Riddle and Rollins. Yep. Moving on to a match. I think you have a lot to say about. I'm not sure. Pat McAfee versus Happy Corbett. Yeah, I'm going to listen this one. Because my opinion on this match is really good. So maybe you'll change my mind. Why? Why Why would you not be excited about this one? Look, Pat McAfee is a good wrestler. Happy Corbin can be good when he wants to be. But this match, for me, it just doesn't gel. Like... I, I, maybe it's because I don't like the name Happy Corbin. Maybe I don't like his gimmick. I preferred Baron Corbin. You know, the biker gimmick that he had without the bike. No, that wasn't a bike. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What? He looked like a bald. He looked like somebody that was trying to hold on to the last shred of dignity as far as his hair was concerned. <laughs> that hair was terrible. That was terrible. I don't know who decided that Baron Corbin needs to look like a middle-aged... Middle-aged father going to his kid's school, recently divorced. <laughs> Look, I'm the cool dad. It, it With the re- it, receding it hairline. I think, I think, I think Corbin is one of those guys that, no matter what you give him, can make it work. He's he's made everything work. He's made bum ass Corbin work. The guy came out with no. The guy got so broke at one stage. Apparently, he had no entrance music. Do you remember that? He yeah, lost his entrance know. music. He came out with a spaghetti-covered shirt. He wrestled <laughs> the spaghetti, and he made it worse. He looked, t- he looked awful, and he made it work. McAfee, we've seen him already make stuff work. We've seen him in the NXT ring. He's, I never thought I would see somebody of, of his caliber. And let's face it. McAfee doesn't need to do any of this. He's had a good, good um, uh, NFL career. He's made his money. He's done more than made his money. 
and so whatever he's coming out and doing right now, it's literally for the love of what of 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 wrestling. So you can see that's that's what he wants to do. Um, so that being said. I would like to see. <laughs> I would like to see McAfee do a Canadian destroyer on him. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? You know why I want to see that. I, I mean, do. Ever since the Bad Bunny came out and did that, like I think all the all the all the so, suppose <laughs> celebrities that come out are trying to do like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> You probably going to see it with the Logan Paul match. You're probably going to see it with the Logan Paul Miz match. But I've noticed something ever since what was his name? The guy who acted in uh, Arrow, yeah. um, Stephen Amell. Ever since his match at that SummerSlam yes. with Neville years ago, I mean, he outperformed what people expected out of him. Every... Who's this Neville you speak of? The Boston Park, as you know him from AEW now. Are you talking about Prince Alf? <laughs> Listen here, Mr. I don't know what to call you anymore. <laughs> don't make me start with beheading jokes. I'll do it. I'll do it. Are we, are we talking about the same guy? <laughs> no, we're not talking about Frodo Baggins from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> are we talking about the same guy? Are we talking about that guy? Stephen Amell, right? Let's get back on track. After that performance by Stephen Amell, where he outperformed what people expected, I noticed celebrities yeah. since Bad Bunny have been coming in doing great moves. And I think that's what Pat McAfee is trying to emulate. That's what Logan Paul is going to try and emulate. Um, I think, uh, what was his name? Johnny Knoxville tried a little bit of that. Oh, as yeah, a- Knoxville. Yeah. Knoxville was insane. But I mean, that's can, can, can you really compare what he does anyway and say it's not wrestling? If you watched any episode, any jackass at all, you will realize that what he did in the ring that day was literally just a 15-minute jackass episode. That was that was basically yeah. what he did. It, yes, it, it, I, it, I thought it was good. I, I, I really enjoyed what happened. There was a few things that didn't work, but mm-hmm. uh, the mousetrap being one of them. But I like it. I like goofy wrestling. You know that. I'll, I'm there for the goofiness. I, yes, I do like a proper athletic contest and everything else. I do not like choreographed wrestling. I'm not there for that. <laughs> I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> so I'm just going to stray away from that and get back yeah. on track. Let's, just, let, let, let's do, I think we do, we speak about, <clears throat> because for me, the Miz and Logan Paul match and mm-hmm. uh, McAfee and Baron Corbin, to me, it's sort of in the same category. Yeah. It's, it's sort of in the same category because you have, yes, as much as McAfee isn't an active guy all the time, he's a, he's a WWE employee, but yeah. uh, he's not a wrestler. He's not an active wrestler. Neither is Logan Paul. So didn't Logan Paul that, just sign like? contract i expected he would be on regular yeah, but he's not a wrestler he's not a he's not an actual is yeah. he not training in the pc at all i suppose he is but if we go to the if we go and train now for a week it'll be it's not going to be the same as doing that for years on end and bumping and and everything else so yeah. i think they put them in there with two solid guys they put them in there with muz and and baron for a reason because they probably try and get the best out of them. And you know what the weird part is? The fact that we're having this conversation about the Miz. <laughs> Just think about this for a second. A few yeah. years ago, we hated the Miz so badly uh, that there were, you know, the Miz, we all felt like the Miz girl at one stage. <laughs> And I think this is a good time for me to address this. I've never said this on air because I know how Baz, a certain former member of the major players, felt about the Miz. But now it's just you and me. So I'm just going to go all go ham and exactly how I feel. I've never Tell us how you ever, really feel. I've never ever, aside from one time, ever liked the Miz. The only time the Miz, I liked him, was when he had the Intercontinental run in 2016 with Dolph Ziggler. 
that was the only time Miz was actually entertaining for once, especially the whole career versus title thing. From the day I saw the Miz step into WWE, I absolutely despised him. He's the one guy, there's a meme online that says, who's the one wrestler when every time you see him, you just roll your eyes? For me, that has and will always be the Miz. And I can throw a certain Enzo Amoron in there as well. I can throw a certain big cast in there as well. There are quite a few wait guys. A, wait a second. Are you saying that every Monday night when Miz TV starts, that's not your favorite part of the show? I absolutely despise it. Because what I like to see, when, when Miz comes out, I like to throw my hands up in the air and be like, Miz, when my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. That's what I like to say to them is I never, ever, not even for one second, liked a single atom on Miz's body. That's how much I hated him. Does, has everybody forgotten when he first came in and he was doing this whole diva search thing, he forgot the number that was on the Titan trunk behind and he read it off his wrist. Has everybody forgotten that segment? Go on YouTube, type it in, you'll watch and you'll see I know. how cringeworthy that segment was. Yes. That wasn't the but, only segment I hated of him. I hated his segments with Cena in 2009, Bash. I hated everything about this guy, and I never liked him. And okay. that's why I don't think this match is going to be entertaining. So my, my, my turning point for the Miz, my, my honest turning point for the Miz, came when Daniel Bryan and him had that interaction. <laughs> that interaction. The Talking Smack interaction. Yeah. When, when when everything came out, I think that's when my my opinion on the Miz in general changed. Because that's I mean, my opinion on the Miz got even worse. Because I was like, I'm looking at this guy going crazy, staring at the mic, and I'm like, if I could reach the screen, I would slap you to get you to shut the fuck up. That's that's but, how I. But, feel. but but I think, I think Brian wanted to touch a nerve with him, and he got it. And that's, yeah. okay, that's probably more Daniel Bryan than The Miz, but mm-hmm. he got his point across. He got him to do exactly what he wanted. And that's how we got to the version of The Miz we got to now, where he's literally a utility player now. You realize that? The Miz yeah, yeah. is like one of those guys where if you've got, look at it, when Bad Bunny came in, who do they who did they get Bad Bunny to work with? Miz. Miz. If you want somebody to be elevated to 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 get up to a certain level, you get them to work with the Miz, and he's safe. The and Miz, Miz actually safe. brought this up in a promo way back in 2011 when he started his WWE title reign. He said, "Whenever WWE wants someone to do an interview, who do they call? They call the Miz. They don't yes. call John Cena or Randy Orton. They call me." And I think because and if you think about it as well, all these guys, as much as the Miz has. Like things on the side that he does and everything else. All of them have a plan at some point to leave WWE. Yeah. All of them have it in their plan. Like, okay, so I'm going to work up until this stage. And then when my Hollywood career kicks off, I'm out. Mm -hmm. The Miz has done it all. The Miz is still there. He's still wrestling an active schedule. He still does uh, his reality show. We show now he does movies. I've got, he I've, does got, it all. I've got loads of props for the Miz. The Miz, the Miz for me, I think a lot of guys that come in and just like, okay, I'm gonna do this until here, and then after that, I'm out. The Miz, the, I think the Miz is doing when, exactly what he needs to do. Two years ago, just before COVID started, didn't he like release sort of a small little album on Spotify with the Johnny Drip Drip, where they had that whole song? I think he did. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Miz has done it all. And um, so that's why they're putting him in with Logan Paul. But if I'm looking at winners for this match, I'm, I'm definitely going with, um, I mean, come on. Logan Paul's first match, they gotta, he's got to go over. He definitely is going to be him for the win. And when it comes to Corbin and McAfee, I want to say, I'm going to go with McAfee. Like, I, seeing that there's no prediction game anymore, I want McAfee to win. I want McAfee to I Because... I had the same thing when you face Austin here at WrestleMania, and I said it on the previous Major Players video. You can't have a commentator lose a match against someone who comes out on a regular basis, especially a heel, and then talk nice about the guy. He's going to talk yes. smack about the yes. time. But 
the people at home watching are like, didn't you lose to the guy that you're still talking smack exactly. about? There you go. If, if McAfee beats Corbin and Corbin comes out every week, he can see I beat this guy, but he's a great talent. You know, it works into that way. So that's why I think McAfee is going to go over. But who do you think is going to go over with McAfee, Corbin, and uh, Paul and Miz? Okay. First thing that I want to say is I need to see how Logan Paul is accepted by the audience in general. Because I don't know if you noticed, but when he first came out, he was getting the crap boot out of him. Even though he was he was there as a quote-unquote face, people reacted to him because Logan Paul, as popular as he is, uh, yeah, he's not, uh, he's not well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. That, right? And then... So I need I I want to see come Monday what his reaction to the, by the crowd in general is um, whether or not they boo all over and you know just the way they're reacting. Um, that being said, um, I see shenanigans. I see shenanigans in both of these matches. I see a ton of them, especially if we see. McAfee winning on the one match, which I want. And um, who do I want? Who do I want? Who do I want? I don't understand. I would go with the Miz. I would want the Miz to win. Because that, to me, that feels like a program. That, that doesn't feel like one and done. That doesn't feel really? like one and done. What do you think this is all? Because remember, he's got a multi, uh, t- multi contract. His contract is for multiple matches. So right. Maybe he goes. Maybe he he loses this one, wins the next one, and we go for the rubber match. But yeah, I see. I see it probably going, uh, Muz winning, his match, the first one, and then we go to the second one, possibly a third. And then on so the I'm side, saying, basically yeah. what you're saying is Miz wins at SummerSlam. They yeah. go over to Clash of the Castle in the UK. Logan wins that one. They come back to the US at Extreme Rules in October, and that's where Logan Paul faces the Miz. And it's an Hopefully. Extreme Rules match, and that's where Logan that, Paul wins there. And I do hope that this year's Extreme Rules has Extreme Rules for every stipulation. <laughs> I don't want to keep them going to the last minute thing that one Extreme Rules Look, match on the that, now, that, now that the booking is going to be done a little bit differently, or should we say we hope is done a little bit differently? Oh, there's not yeah, going to be... Exactly, a, yeah. Exactly, yeah, with certain scripts leaving a certain mansion in Stamford. I know that's the... The case is that not the case. There's, there's still going to be writing for a 77 year old man. I really hope that's not what's going to be happening. No, no, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think Vince is there anymore. I, I, it's probably they're going to feel it for a while because there's probably a lot, a lot of the, the the guys that he hired that's probably going to try mm-hmm. to work the same way. But um, I agree. Yeah. So I don't <laughs> see. I don't see it happening immediately. But if change is going to come. Change will come. That being I said, really... that being said, after we said change is going to come, then let's talk about a match that has happened already several times, shall we? <laughs> Are you talking about a certain headband? <laughs> uh, dude, I was actually, look, the rest of the card uh-huh. Has in some way, shape, or form happened before. Um, and specifically, let's start off with the, the Raw Women's Championship one. Let's go there. Let's okay. talk about some of the ladies' matches. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Bianca and, you know, as much as, <laughs> as, much as I'm a fan of, of Bianca and... and, and the stuff that the ladies are doing in general, there's a lot of their matches, to be honest with you, is probably storyline-wise um, a little bit better than some of the guy stuff. But I do not understand sometimes Bianca cutting a promo. I'm old. 
arm on. And I feel it when I listen to this young lady speaking and I don't get it. She's speaking in your kids' language, basically. I'm yes, sure they essentially. Better. Essentially. Yeah. So essentially yeah, when I, go, I, I do like that. I, she's got so much of energy and things when she comes out. And yeah, you know the one thing, the one thing that I'm I'm genuinely afraid of for her mm. is that. At some point, her braid comes into play again, and somebody and and they end up doing some horrid hair versus hair thing, and she loses that braid in there. I, and I know that's like a defining character with her, characteristic of hers. And I'm, I don't think that's going to happen because the braid I is essentially be, part of the youngest. I would be really upset for her if they do that. I would be really yeah. upset. If they if they decide now you know what we're gonna do we're gonna book you in a to lose men and and I know Vince Russo is not around anymore but every now and then when the mm. booking the booking winds start blowing it's like oh bro you can hear the bro just there just beneath the surface bro right, right there yeah. I, I hope it doesn't happen I really hope it doesn't happen that being said this one is pretty simple. Um, they, these two are going to have a wrestling classic, and Bella is going to beat Lynch, and Lynch is going to lose her mind, <laughs> and we're probably going to see the mental breakdown of Becky Lynch. Maybe we see the fiend. Maybe we you see think? Becky Lynch. Maybe we see Becky Lynch come out as the fiend. <laughs> Uh, I, I really hope that it's not that old Finn Balor was <laughs> that was going to happen several years ago. I really, I, I'm thankful to the flu for once a year that we it prevented a catastrophe like that match was going to be. Honestly, you're going to see, I think that match though was just WWE trying to curve favor with the LBGTQ community. Because yeah, essentially, that, it, it feels a little bit too hammered in. I'm, I'm all for inclusive inclusivity and everything else but when you try and literally try and like hammer a, a, a yeah. stick into a round hole they, no it doesn't work you, you they need to do it. there's better ways of doing it yeah <laughs> so way. so who are you so who are you um, going over on this one is it no nah, it's 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 ballet i don't see it going any other way i don't see this going any other way I see her being a Becky having a loss actually being a lot better because Becky's character, let's be honest, Becky's character is just amazing. And look, it gives it gives uh, Rale now the chance to like cut, uh, well redeem herself after that loss, after the loss. Of- so yeah, everything. A ballet win on this. I don't see anything changing. That being said, they really need to do something with the world master on the raw and SmackDown because it's paper yeah. is not even covering it. I, I want to say personally, personally, as someone that picked Asuka like six times to return and lost every single time, yeah. I'd like to see. Bianca Belair versus Asuka. That's what I want to see. I'm here for that. I would like to see it. Did you not have that match already? No, no. Not on a pay-per-view. I don't think it was It was on a pay-per-view. If it was on a Raw. Might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want it on Raw. I want it on a pay-per-view. I want a pay-per-view quality match with, with two okay. former NXT champs. With two former NXT champs on That's on a pay per view, on a proper pay per view, and they need to they need to let these guys go out there and absolutely demand. I'm not going to get my other match anytime soon. You, I have no <laughs> idea what's going on with Io Shirai. If she's coming up to the main roster, if she's going, to, knowing my luck, what happened? I have no I, idea. I you know. The last time that I the the the, the, the last thing that happened that made me remember her was jumping off the top of that cell with the trash can over her head. Trash can over her head. She's done that multiple times, actually. 
And that wasn't the first time. Oh, okay. I've I've missed the first. I've missed the previous ones. But like yeah. literally <laughs> after that, I know she was NXT Tag Champ uh, for a while, yeah. and yeah, uh, I, I forget the lady's name now, but. She was the person that she was tagging with was injured, and has come back from injury. Uh, what was the name? Week. She came back this past week. Uh, I forgot her name. Yeah, was exactly. it was not Tegan Fox. Um, damn it. Yeah, that that chick. Let's just let's just put it that way. That chick that we know. So she, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So but like, uh, her tag <laughs> partner got injured. Came back from mm-hmm. Italy, and we haven't seen Io Shirai for a while. Yeah, it's shocking. But like you were saying about the whole NXT thing, I wish they would drive that forward more because I understand. Listen, NXT wasn't a third brand of the WWE; it wasn't really acknowledged for a while. But it would be nice if a commentary they mentioned, although Bianca Belair, Zoe Stark, Becky Lynch, NXT, you know, Zoe Stark. That chick, yeah, yeah. So didn't she win the Battle Royal on NXT exactly. this past week? She did. Yeah. So she's she's yeah. gone back. She's gone out an injury, come back, and Io Shirai and then, hasn't gotten over <laughs> falling out of a trash can. Apparently, <laughs> she's literally still in the trash can. I think. <laughs> I have. She's one of those people. She's what. She's genuinely one of those people that I think would would. Uh, Stiff and and um, Triple H being in charge, I think she's one of those people that will definitely do a lot better on the main roster. She's got a good chance. She's got a very good chance. And and like we brought up the whole trash can analogy, it's like they put her in the recycle bin of the laptop, and it's either release when you empty the recycle bin or restore and yep. bring her back into the thing. I really hope they hit the restore button and not the empty recycle bit button with her and have her release. Because she has uh, they, 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 they will make... It will be a horrible mistake. If they do that with her, it will be a terrible mistake. It will be like them losing Cesaro. Look at look at where Cesaro is now. Have you watched Dream of Honor yet? Not yet. The, not yet. And sh- hush. You've not read the result? Nope. There okay. There is young Tate. That's it. All I'm gonna say is Pete knows. <laughs> Pete knows. <laughs> I would get him for that. I'm trying to forget about. It. Yeah, but and that's what I like the tension of Finch as well. That you know it, she can take a loss and go over. It's the same thing I said about Rollins. And yeah. it's funny the husband is like they're so. Elevated that not a single loss can pick bring them down a peg. They're just they are super boss level basically to bring in a, a gaming term. They're super boss level. They're yeah. god mode right now. So yeah, for this match, I'm I'm sick and tired of it. Honestly, I've seen it way too much. I've had enough of Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch promos. It's time for Lynch to move on. I would like to see them do something with Lynch. Even and 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 I don't think. Uh, take off Raw. Take off Raw. Take her maybe. I don't know if you want to put her on SmackDown because she's already been there, done that. Maybe do what they did with Natalia. Take her to NXT. And I would like them to do this. A lot of the talent that's being wasted on the main roster, take them back to NXT and have them work the younger guys, just like they did with Ziggler, just like they did with Natty for a little while. Take them down there. Have them elevate the young. There's nothing more you can do with Lynn. She's won a did she's won a Royal Rumble. She's been money in the bank. She's been a uh, women's champion multiple times. She's made event at WrestleMania. Same thing with Rollins. He's done it. Oh, not. He's won money in the bank. Uh, he's he, he's done it all. There's nothing more for them to do. They're so elevated that there's nothing left for them to do in the main roster. And you can see that they don't have aspirations like The Rock or John Cena or Roman Reigns to yeah. leave WWE and go to film or Hollywood. Yes, even though Rollins and Lynch have acted in certain parts in movies, that's not their main point of concern. Their main concern is being a talent on WWE and wrestling. But if they're not going to go to that level of being, you know, main event tier talent, take them down to NXT, have them work, elevate younger talent. And I think do that with a lot of the guys. Have them populate NXT on a permanent resident basis 
and work with the guys down there. The same way Ziggler did, the same way, I, I mean, this is a bad example, but the same way Curtis Axel did after his run with Eamon didn't go the way he wanted it to go. He went down to NXT to recharge his career and he did quite well down there. So yeah. I think that's what they should do with these talents. But my prediction for this match, obviously, I mean, it's Bianca Belair for the win. It's going to be Belair's redemption from last year's WrestleMania, I mean, last year's SummerSlam, and just putting an exclamation point on her WrestleMania win. And please, for the love of God, if WWE, if anyone you're watching this, please let this be the last time. I don't want a Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar situation. Let this be the last we see of Belair and Lynch. It's it's it, it, at this rate we're going to end up with the Randy Orton John Cena situation. Yeah, and at least I I would have really liked it if John Cena and Randy Orton had their last match at Bragging Rights 2009 that Iron Man match that was kind of good. I'll give them that it was a good match. After that they shouldn't have revisited it. Just well, leave it alone. Doesn't does it feel at times like they're trying to manufacture a rivalry? <laughs> exactly. With Reigns and Lesnar, they're doing the exact same thing. With the vignettes, the moment they released that vignette showing all the matches they had, I, I yep. said it to myself, you little sniveling, you... And that's what you're doing. You're doing John Cena and Randy Orton yep. all over again. <laughs> and I hate it. I absolutely despise it. And I'm going to mention this when we do get to that match. But seeing as we're both on the same page with Belair and Lynch, let's talk about the other women's match on the SmackDown brand. It's going to be the current, the newly minted champion, Liv Morgan, taking on Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And honestly, I'll take, I'll, I'll start off with this one because I, and, and I've made this quite well known on previous major player videos. I have always been a fan of, of Liv Morgan. I like her finisher, The Oblivion. It's a really cool move. Mm-hmm. I like her character gimmick. And like I said, the main reason why I have a modicum of respect for Liv Morgan is a more sentimental rather than from a character perspective. It's because she was born the same year as myself. Ah. So I see a lot of parallels in that. Even though I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a blonde like her, like a certain former member of the major players, I'm more into brunettes personally. But I do like Liv Morgan as a character. I like her as from, from the sentimental point of view. And I think, I don't know if, if this is real or if they scripted it, but this past week on SmackDown, when Ronda Rousey said, I'm going to beat you at SummerSlam, Liv Morgan fired back with, I'm going to beat you not because I'm better than you, but because I want this more than you. Referencing the fact that Ronda Rousey has walked out on WWE before because WWE for her is just like a pastime. It's a hobby. Yeah. It's just something she wants to do. It's not something she's passionate about like Liv Morgan has been passionate about. So... Coming into this match, I think Ronda Rousey is going to be doing the same thing we saw her do after the WrestleMania 35. She's going to go on another hiatus, maybe have another couple more babies with her boyfriend or her husband. And uh, Liv Morgan's mm-hmm. going to run the WrestleMania as champion. So I don't see Liv Morgan losing quickly. Mm-hmm. I see Ronda losing, walking out. Liv Morgan carrying the title throughout the year. So that's my prediction. But let me get your thoughts on this match. I've got three words for you. Mm-hmm. Viva la Rasa. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like to me. Liv Morgan, and I wasn't I wasn't always the biggest Liv Morgan fan. It literally this this has the feel of Eddie Guerrero versus Brock Lesnar. That's literally what it feels like. I know everyone's everyone a couple of people jumped on her after the the whole uh, money in the bank cash in and why she didn't wait. I mean, none of the females wait with with the money in the bank cash in. They like try and get it off the board as quickly as possible. I think Carmela might have been the longest, the 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 person yeah. held it the longest. That being said, I am I in 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 spite of everything, I like Love. I think she's got this really good underground underdog thing going for her, and. It just works. It just works. She, she's she's not like stuck on the mic anymore. Every this past week on, on SmackDown, she sounded great. She was like she speaks, she cuts a promo, does it well. But by contrast, you have Rousey on the other side, who's been doing 
probably, yeah, who should, who's the quote unquote star in this whole thing. And yeah, I, I, I don't think she's on the level of Liv. I don't think she's on Liv Morgan's level, actually. And a lot of people are talking about, no, Liv is not on Rousey's level. I think it's pretty much the opposite. That being said, we're probably going to see that classic that 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 classic unfold this way. She's Liv Morgan's probably gonna take a hell of a lot of punishment, a hell of a lot of punishment, and we are going to see a, a roll up finish. We're gonna see yeah. a roll up finish. We're gonna see something, but yeah, I want I, I want Liv Morgan to win. I, I, I would like her to be champ for a while, have a nice long run, and work a few matches. That being said, the, you know the next pay-per-view is when Survivor Series? Are we having Survivor Series? Uh, 26 November, I think. 27 or 26 November. Okay. So it could change by then. Yeah. Yeah, it's so we're going to have T-shirt warfare is going to be different this year, but yeah, <laughs> let's see. Coming to that, I actually wish they would just do away with the whole T-shirt warfare thing. It was fun in 2016. Now there's no point happened. in it. Now you have the draft a few day, a few weeks before that, and you 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 have new brand that. agents. <laughs> That's why. It ties into the whole thing with the now that the titles have been unified, what do we do with the tag title? I think uh, Survivor Series at latest have the two Raw women's and the SmackDown women's tag team be unified. Uh, sorry, not the tag team, the, no, the women's I, champion. I, I think unified. they split it before then. I think they split them. I, I'm not sure how they're going to do it exactly, but they're probably going to split it somehow. What they, do you mean split going it? To, it's probably going to go back to the way it was. With, right. But I have no idea how. I'll, I wouldn't know how to book it. I'll tell you how. They go to SummerSlam. They build it up as brand versus brand for the last time. I would go with that tagline. Because I think this whole brand warfare thing, it's gone stale. It's dry. No one's buying into it anymore. Because we see the Usos of both brands. We Well, we should. But we don't see Roman yeah. Reigns on both brands. And uh, it's going to become very unified. And, and I think uh, the U.S. title and the Intercontinental should also fuse. Just have the IC title out there. It's the one that has the most lineage behind it anyways. And, yeah, it's going to be one woman's title. It'll appear on both brands. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Just, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, just... Whoa. Mm-hmm. So you would book a, a title unification between the Intercontinental and the U.S. title as it stands currently? No, there'll be different champions. Different champions. I would hands. pay to see that match, though. I would pay to see Walter versus Bobby Lashley. Well, Walter could still Sorry, be I still call him Walter. I knew him as Walter. Uh, yeah, Gunter. Yeah. Gunter. Yeah. I, I see where you're going with it, but can I just say one thing? I absolutely hate the new look of the IC title. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't like the way the ice title, I, I prefer the one that Rhodes brought back. Or even the one that was at the uh, the ladder match in WrestleMania 10. That was a good title. Yes. I, I can't the one that, the one that, uh, the one that Sean and um, and Razor fought over, the the one with the white background. Perfect title. No, no, no. That was the, the silver background one. That, that one is okay, but the best one was the white background one. Yes. That Ultimate Warrior had, that, yes. that Koyu brought back. Yeah. That was the best one. I would prefer. I don't know why they changed it. It was. It was. It was fine. Even the U.S. title. I don't like how it looks right now. It looks absolutely. I, I do crazy. like the U.S. title. I do. I don't. The U.S. title for me at the moment is what the U.S. title should be. It's a huge belt. It is a huge belt with stars and stripes all over it. It had stars and stripes before. It had the yes, American it's flag. Not, it's American. It's the only thing that would be yes, for it had the flag. If, it had, if it had a Chevy logo and a cheeseburger on it, that, that's about it. It's about as American as you get at this point. Are you talking mainly because of the design of how it looks? Not so much stars and stripes. It looks yeah. 
like a U.S. title. That's the way a U.S. title. It maybe you put I on. I don't like it. Maybe you put on. So you want John Cena to bring back the spinner title? Hell no! God forbid that ever happens again. That was that was. A, that's, I, I don't know. I'm a sucker for those things. I I like that one. That was cool. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, the only thing that should spin are the rims on your car, not the actual belts. Okay, if if, if John Cena came out with a with a car like Eddie Guerrero did, and he's had his rims spinning, I'd be like, okay, cool, that looks nice. Not your belt, please. You're making it look like a toy, not a prestigious title. Like, look at the World Heavyweight Championship, the one that Ric Flair held, and put it next to the WWE Spinner Belt. Which one would you want? I would go for the World Heavyweight Spinner Belt. <laughs> oh god! I expected the more. The belt truth. was cool, um, man. You know your eighties wrestling knowledge. The I expected the belt more. was cool. <laughs> that was some good shit, pal. Oh god, no, no, hell! Oh, and by the way, you mentioned it, and and and, and I, I I I made a note because I I still do this. Um, you mentioned about the whole money in the bank not being long uh, holders for the women's. I just had a look. Liv cashed in on the same night. Alexa cashed in on the same night. And Bailey cashed in on the same night. I would like if they had at least a medium term holder of that, that money in the bank. Making the women's money in the bank feel less uh, less appreciated than the men's yeah. one. Because it, it, they don't it, have long story like, about it. It feels like, specifically with the ladies' ones, it's like, okay, let's just clear this off the board as quickly as possible. We don't want it to be a factor in here. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like. It feels like when they do that cash-in, like, immediately, like, okay, let's get this, okay, we know you've won it, but let's clear it out as quickly as possible, and now we'll focus on the on the Joker being... It's, the men's one. I don't know. It feels, it feels like and I think, and then that's where I think your whole analogy of the women's, uh, you know, roster being so thin is they don't have storylines surrounding that briefcase. You know, at least have Liv chase someone for a while. You know, like how they had Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins chasing with the briefcase, Cody Rhodes, Davey Sandow chasing with the briefcase. Have her put the briefcase on the right line in matches so. It, helps elevate other talent before she cashes it in, you know. I get some elevation on the women's. Did you see Raw this past week with the 24-7 cha- championship where they had that number of cha- title changes within a matter of seconds, men and All women? All I can say That's is, still- thank God Absolutely. that Asuka was not one of the 24-7 champs. That's, That's it. At least, uh, they, like, take Tamina and Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke is so talented. She's shown it time and time again. Put her in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in some storyline. At least have grudge matches on the women's side like you do for the men's side. I think they're not... They're doing the AEW thing, where WWE are not giving the women's roster enough to work with, which is why it feels so empty and shallow the way that it does. And I think that's the mistake they need to resolve if they want the women's roster and the women's side to be elevated. Yeah. But moving on. <laughs> oh, you want to say something? No, no, no. I'm I'm I I for me the 27 24/7 championship needed to be the people that was originally holding it. I don't know yeah. how they had a match within a match within a <laughs> match within a match. Well, the 24/7 title rules to suspend it during matches like That's what it was supposed to be, but I'm not sure what happened. On Monday, but yeah. That being <laughs> said, uh, live for the win. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm also going with live for the win because Ronda's leaving. And now moving on to a match that I know you would love to talk about because it concerns one of your favorite wrestlers. We just spoke about it shortly. The United States champion Bobby Lashley taking on I have a theory in a match for the title. So since you're the biggest Bobby Lashley headband fan, you get to go first. Simple. Bobby Lashley wins again. No, wait. Bobby Lashley wins again, but via DQ. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we we've seen Theory do this a couple of times, but yeah, yeah. he's going to he's going to be in in like a hurt lock or some type of 
finisher and he's going to use that briefcase somehow. So Bobby Leslie wins, but via DQ. I don't You're going think the same he's, way gonna go. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win. I don't think he's going to do like a like a clean pin or a, or a submission the way it was um, at Money in the Bank. But uh, yeah, theory, theory is going to come out of there like by the skin of his teeth, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I think Lashley, I think at this point in time, this is the best that Lashley's got. Yeah. The best that they're going to do with Lashley. Lashley is going to yeah. have the US title for a while. Um, I would have preferred that he was in the title picture himself instead of seeing Roman versus Brock number part 4400 or something like that. But yeah, it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to go with Lashley and uh, look at some point in they're gonna need to keep theory at least partially um conscious if that's what I can use because yeah I mm-hmm. see cash in coming in. The cash in is coming in. Yeah. And I know where you're going with that. Because I'm going with the Bobby Lashley by DQ again uh, as well because that's the only way I see theory the theory is on a level now where he's gonna be like I don't need the US title anymore. I've got a guaranteed WWE Championship in briefcase, basically. So I don't need this title. I don't need to put up with this. Let's get all over it. And I'm going to go to the main event. So that's what I'm going to say. If, if, if this is anything to go by, I'm predicting that Lashley vs. Theory goes on first. It's going to go on right in the beginning of the pay-per-view. It's going to be our opening contest, and then we're going to see Theory again in the main event trying to cash in. That's possible. But um, speaking of the bloodline, Speaking of the bloodline, we're going to go on to the WWE Tag Team Championship, undisputed Tag Team Championship match. It's the current champions, the Usos, defending against one of your favorite and my favorite tag teams, the Street Profits. And the the, 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 the little asterisk on this match is that we have a special guest referee in Jeff Jarrett as a special guest referee. Now, I know that you watched 90s wrestling. Yes. Now, I've watched a little bit of it, but I've not been as much of as a fan, I'd say, because I didn't watch as much 90s wrestling as you did of Jeff Jarrett. So maybe you could change your mind and tell me why this is so significant that he's being a special guest referee in a tag match. Go ahead. There's no significance. Jeff Jarrett is from Tennessee. This pay-per-view is happening in Tennessee. That's essentially it. Jared was Jared used to be Jared, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, um Jerry Jared, his dad's territory was Tennessee. That's that's one of the territories yeah. that, that Vince actually bought over at one stage. And, uh, you know, from all the bad blood and everything else after WCW and uh Jeff holding him up for money, um for to you know drop the title to China and everything else. Uh, personally, I'm actually surprised that we are having this conversation about Jeff Jarrett in the WWE in general because there was, there was a time when I would have never thought that we'd see Jeff Jarrett in with involved yeah. in WWE in any way, shape, or form. Um, I think Especially it's after- interesting. Driving force behind TNA. Yep. <laughs> um, I do think that I don't think I, I don't think it's really going to be shenanigans, but I think they're probably teasing it to be that <sighs> profits are going to break up. I just hope that one of those breakups. I know we've seen we we keep trying to say it now. That the guys don't need to be like have this animosity towards one another, where they like, oh, you're you're the you're going to be the Marty Janetti in the situation, and I'm going to be the Shawn Michaels. I would like both of them to shine. 
And personally, I don't want to see another heavy machinery thing happen. Here. I really don't want either of these guys to be Tucker. We, we have no idea what happened to that poor guy. <laughs> and look, I like I like Angelo Dawkins, and I know as much as as much as we say Tez is going to be the breakout star, and he is. A lot of guys, I mean, even The Rock was talking about him the other day, and and you know how Montez has this way about him and everything else, and people can see the star power that he has. I just don't want it to be a thing of okay, you guys are going to break up as a tag team, and the first thing we do is put you in a program against each other. Maybe you just, you know? Just go their separate ways. Eh? We just go our separate ways. Oh, we're still a tag team. We're still the Street Profits. But but you do your thing. I'll do yeah, my thing. Like do the new thing, I do my thing. We're still friends. And if yeah. anything, the New Day have shown us exactly how this works. I know, I, I know we're probably going to be pushing it. I know we probably do need to see the guys break up, but I do like the Street Profits and I do like the Usos as well. If anybody knows about the ink that I have, you guys know well enough to know, uh, yeah, I have Samoan tendencies. <laughs> you, you, you have Samoan blood in you. <laughs> I have Samoan, Samoan blood. I, am, I, I, I lean strongly towards the Samoans. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't think they lose. Do you think they lose the titles on the same night as 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 they book Roman to lose it? Or I actually do. Yes, I do. Because here's what I'm thinking, and, and I'll tie this into the main event because we're going to be talking about that as well. Since we we basically talked about the rest of the card, we can bring the main event into this as well. Roman Reigns is going to. Because if rumors are to be believed, he's going to be going off into Hollywood. Rock has secured some roles for him, apparently. So they, he's going to go off into Hollywood after this. He's dropping the title to Lesnar. But Lesnar's not going to walk out as a champion. Austin, oh, sorry, Theory is going to be walking out as champion. He's going to cash in the money in the bank. Before you say anything else, before you say it, there is one thing that I hope happens now that Vince has left. Which is? I hope everybody gets their full names back. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. You know how I feel about this. I hope everybody gets so- it. I hope we start calling him Austin Theory. I hope about well, yes. I hope everybody gets their names back. I mean, I you get Madonna was me. Madonna was really popular back in the day. But I mean, everybody needs if you've had a second name, you need to have both your names now. And we don't yes. need to say Set freaking Rollins in every sentence. Just Seth Rollins. <laughs> we know there's a freaking in there. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. <laughs> That's the next part. I don't understand. It's, it's like even AEW has started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys, uh, any of you guys listening, uh, any play like 90s video games and everything else. That's what it sounds like. When you couldn't program it where you where they where they gave you just like more than one variation of your name. So if you said in a video game, Stone Cold Steve Austin, that's the way they said your name every on single commentary. time. So if you had in-game commentary that said, Oh no, here comes Stone Cold Steve Austin to the link, that's what they'd call you throughout the entire match. And here goes Stone Cold Steve Austin for a move. It sounded like Excalibur was doing commentary for that. <laughs> and by the way, if you're an AEW fan, I I was watching Rampage yesterday. That dude's amazing. I, I, he could probably rap battle Eminem just with his announcing. <laughs> I've never heard somebody say an announcement the way he does. Have you have you heard when he does the DraftKings announcement? How how he runs through that like it's you know a horse oh, racing. Match? He was he was giving out a card the other night. I think he was doing the card for ROH, for for yeah. death before dishonor thing. You and there it? was a match going on at the same time. No no, there wasn't a match going on yet. They were doing the like the final bit of the intros and everything else. Yeah. And he's going through this thing, and he was like 
Okay, surely he's out of breath now. And he's not out of breath. That, that guy's going <laughs> at it, bro. <laughs> and, 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 and it's not like you don't, he's not mincing his words. You understand what he's saying. Exactly. He's not every word, but he's, he's not going up, uh, He's not eating his words. That, that guy has a future commentating for the Vodacom Derby in July in the JB. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. He has a future there. But yeah, like coming back to this, I think Austin Theory is going to cash in money in the bank. He's going to be champion. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns are out of the picture. And I hope we never see another match between the both of them again. And the bloodline is going to effectively come to an end. Paul Heyman falls away, or maybe Paul Heyman turns on Roman Reigns. Here's a, here's a good fantasy book for you. Turns on Roman Reigns. Goes with Brock Lesnar. Stay with me. Austin Theory comes out to cash in. Le- Heyman turns on Lesnar and sides with Theory and becomes Theory's mouthpiece. And Theory is the champion. So we get effectively a pseudo double turn by Heyman in one night. That's that would be awesome, really. That would be awesome. And then obviously, you know, I'm going with the street profits for the win. They take the titles off the Usos. Maybe we see the Usos disappear for a while, you know, take some time off, or they could come out the next week on SmackDown, or I don't know what brand they're on. I mean, the, the champions can appear on SmackDown. both brands, but I don't know what brand they fall on. Originally, they were on SmackDown. Right. Okay. Then SmackDown, they come out and be like, uh, Roman Reigns, the Charbel Chief, has abandoned us. Well, maybe they go back to their old gimmick, not not the not the the one that we had originally, where they come out doing the whole freaking Haka thing with the All Blacks do, but a different one, you know, like the one they had in 2016 when they came out with their hoodies, you know, the, the that mean street kind of Uso that we had before, and um, yeah, we, we we just dissolved the whole bloodline thing. It's been two years now. It's literally as of the SummerSlam. It's been two years. That Roman Reigns has come back and we've had this whole bloodline Samoan thing going on. So I think it's time. I think it's due enough time. Bloodline comes to an end. Street Profits win the, the, the tag titles. Brock Lesnar defeats Roman Reigns for the Universal title. And then we get a theory coming out and cashing in. Ten seconds later. Okay. So I'd like it to go the, uh, the other way, actually. I would... Okay. I, I would like it to go. Usos hold on to their belts, right? Uh-huh. If we see the split between the prophets. So the prophets split. They decide, you know what? We've tried now too many times, and it's just not working. And then on yeah. the other side, we get to that point where you know that spot in a last man standing match. You know it's going to happen. That both yeah. Lesnar. And Roman, see, I didn't even tell you what it is. You know the spot that I'm talking about. Yeah, and, and I already know. Uh, both Lesnar and and Roman are down, and we have a replay of the heist of the century. <laughs> we have a replay mm-hmm. of the heist, and Terry comes down, cashes in, turns it into the triple threat, and pins. Who got pinned the last time? It was Roman, right? Yes. Roman got pinned the last time. Here we go. There's another step. There's another step. Aha. Uh-huh. And uh, what of uh, Paul Heyman? What happens to him? Um, the wise man, what, what happened? You see, the thing is, they teased the whole thing the last time. Remember when they did the whole thing where... Where he held the way he held the titles, um, or where they helped screw Brock over the last time. You mean a day one in Royal Rumble? Yes, whole... yeah, yeah. I don't think they do it again. I don't think they do it again. I think they've done it already. I don't think they do it again. Okay. Uh, I think Heyman is just Heyman's, Heyman's probably overdue to get for getting payback. Right? I think Heyman's overdue to get payback. And I think it probably happens here in some way, shape, or form. How? I don't know. I don't know how exactly. But I think his payback comes up at this one. And Theory ends up 
ends up with the title. I know it's I, I know it's a bit of a stretch going from from A to Z on this one, but that's that's essentially what I see happening here, man. That we and then after that, we then go to a power shift in the bloodline. The bloodline doesn't go away at all. In fact, now we have a bloodline where you have the Osos now have titles and uh, Mr. Tribal Chief with nothing. So then you have uh, then you have a power shift in there and Heyman hasn't cost Reigns anything. Heyman hasn't cost Reigns anything. In fact, the, the loser in this whole thing is just Reigns. And the wise man is now with the Usos. Because I had as well, mind you, I know they're not going to do it. I know uh, they, they keep saying that when uh, Solo comes up to the main roster, he's going to be his own guy. But what if he's not? Yeah. What if he's not? What if you then have another Us within the bloodline? And I don't know. Side with Roman? They do. I know you. I know. I, I know you haven't watched NXT 2.0, but they've been referencing uh, Solo Sokoa's bloodline in a lot of the promos. Cameron Grimes yeah. has done it. Faith Waller's done it. So even Von Wagner just recently that he's in the field, but currently he has done An it. Exciting, so exciting wrestler Von Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe that Kyle is no longer in Kyle O'Reilly. All these guys have gone over to AEW who have, and they haven't been used at all in any way, shape, or form the way they were on NXT. And now yeah. you have the guy that he last feuded with doing the. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just, it just completely blows my mind. When you said Kyle without saying the O'Reilly, I was like, is he going there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that one doesn't watch in it. That one doesn't watch AEW in general. <laughs> but like you were saying, you opened up something interesting about the whole uh, Heyman thing. What if mid-match Heyman comes in the ring to try and help Roman and gets an M5 from Lesnar, which sets up Roman to spear Lesnar and get the win again? So in essence, Heyman really helped Roman. You know, to win. But wouldn't that be so generic because that would mean there'd be no title changing hands at the end of the day. Or Roman spears Lesnar but doesn't get the win. Lesnar doesn't come back, gets the win. It could go that way. Or it could go the whole WrestleMania heist way. And I want to I extend something that you said about the whole street. Here's, the, here's the question though. Here's the question. Here's the question. Mm -hmm. Do you then keep the belt on maybe, let's say, a Brock or Reigns, who's not there at the moment, mm -hmm. and wait until next year for WrestleMania for Rhodes? Uh, no. No, I don't want to repeat of Roman and Brock. I think they've had way too many runs. Both of them have had a way of time way <laughs> too long. So I don't, I don't see and that then, happening. And then did you, you, you've probably heard the, the rumor on Friday from SmackDown where Brock left for a couple hours? Yes, and he came back only at the end. Yes, because uh, Cole and uh, Cole and uh, McAfee, their reactions at the end of the show actually, I think, spoke more than anything that they actually said. Because they believe that Lesnar was not in the building at the time. I don't think that they told him that Lesnar was coming out, actually. Because if you go back and you listen to that com that piece of commentary there specifically, <laughs> yeah, came out, he had no idea, man. <laughs> like, you're, you're hearkening my mind back to just at Mind the Bank where they posted the whole video of McAfee and Cole marking out with Bill Cash in the title because they didn't expect it. And I think they do that for a lot of the commentary where they do not need to know yep. to increase the excitement and surprise and the naturalism of that on air. They don't tell them certain things are happening. Nope. Even with Kevin Owens being title, remember they said Owens did not know anything. They they thought Ronald, he thought Ronald was going over. 
Then Triple H came out the end, pedigreed Rollins, and looked at Owens. Owens looked at both of them and was like, oh, you're giving me the title? Cool. Covered him. And yeah. what? So I like it when they do that once in a while to increase the natural, the organicness of, of segments and stuff. And just to close off, I, I, I heard that uh, what you said about the whole Street Profits maybe breaking away from each other, but still being friends at the end of the day. I hope that if that happens, I know tag teams generally wear the same outfit. I hope they get their own gimmicks, so to speak. Yep. Like when when the Shield broke up, Rollins had his own gimmick and Ambrose had his own gimmick. It was still just Roman Reigns still being the Shield for a while because he didn't they didn't know how to book him. He still came out to the Shield music. Still technically, came out the Shield. technically, he still comes out with Shield gear. Technically, yes, he hasn't he hasn't changed the bit. He hasn't the changed his boots. He hasn't changed those boots or 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 the um or the well pants whatever you want to call them. I think he hasn't changed those boots since he, since his NXT days no. because in NXT because NXT he was still under Joe he was still wrestling as Joe right? No, not in the the he only wrestled one time on NXT and cut one promo on NXT. He was Joe on FCW and Leia. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so, okay. On NXT, he literally had one match and one promo before he got called up. And in that one match, he basically wore those short trunks that you'd see yes. Goldberg. And that's what I no always way. tell you about. I don't I don't understand that. I don't understand this. And this I've I've heard um a couple of OG wrestling wrestling guys mention it. Why cover him up? And I mean only when he became the tribal chief. Did he lose that horrible bulletproof vest of his? <laughs> Isn't it not because of the hernia surgery? They don't want it really to show. But I think they would actually have character, you know, the scar. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I like this version of Roman anyway, so. I like ah. this version okay, of Roman so. a lot. All right, so that's, that's SummerSlam for you. We've covered all eight matches quite fairly quickly than we would have if we were a four-man or three-man crew. So uh, <laughs> that's one good thing about it. But anyways, guys, if you like this, remember to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, turn on the bell notifications, and comment down below because yes. here's, here's how we're going to go for the next few months, right? We've got two pay-per-views coming up that are actually back-to-back. -back. I don't know if you noticed this. 3rd September is the WWE's Clash of the Castle. 4th of September is AEW's All Out. Like, right next to each other, a day apart. So, we're going to have to do both of those. Plus, I'm planning for uh, Jeremy and I to do a watch-along of Clash of the Castle because here yes, in South Africa, yes. South Africa and Britain are just like, I think, an hour apart. So, we will be able to do it the same when we do the Crown Jewel stuff. The hour... The hour apart thing really helps so that we don't have to stay up till midnight to watch these freaking shows. So we'll do it during the evening or in the afternoon, however it plays out yeah. over there, watching it over here. And um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yes, before that, because it's happening in September, we're obviously going to be doing our predictions in August for that show. I'm hoping before we get to those two predictions, I want to get Jeremy and myself on here. There's a video he wanted to do, a rant of AW or rant on whatever he wants to rant about. So I'm hoping we can set a time for that. We could do that as well. And, um, you know, despite losing two men on the team, like I said before, Jeremy and I are the real firecrackers of the major players. We make this channel bump. So, guys, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and comment down below. We want to invite at least, let's say, one guest, maybe, at a time, to come on and join us. Not a, You guys can come take it with us for a minute and we'll just chew the fat, as it were. We want to talk to you guys about wrestling. Because, let's, let's be honest, we're not on here for likes. We're not on here to do things where we just, we're, we're going to create this huge subscriber base and become this <laughs> massive thing. That's not what yeah. we're <laughs> What we're here for is... As South African wrestling fans, we want to hear what yeah. you have to say. We want to hear what you guys want to hear. We we want to get your opinion. Because the thing is, yeah, we get lots of US content. We get UK content. 
we as, as South African wrestling fans, we have a completely different spin on it. Yeah. I'll give you the prime example. Acronyms to us mean something completely different. I'm looking at you, the Jericho Appreciation Society. In society, well, in America, it just means something completely different. <laughs> well, what about the MSK? Massacreness. Massacreness. <laughs> <laughs> so come on. We want to talk to you, South African fans. We want to hear what you have to say. And yes. Just, oh, and by the way, I've watched. First time I'm wearing this shirt, it's yellow for SummerSlam. <laughs> I have to keep with the theme. It's a thing. Everyone knows us. I can. Unlike you, what color are you wearing, really? What? What it's a lovely green shirt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah, comment down below. Maybe we'll invite you on for the watch-alongs. We'll invite you on for the predictions. Let's see what other people and guests have to say now that we're. We've lost two men, but it's okay. We get more people to come on and more yes. views. So now we get you guys to come and sub for them. <laughs> and then, yeah, we want to hear what you guys have to say. Just make sure you keep the beheading jokes to a minimum. That's all we're yeah, saying. That's, that's, that's Mr. Khan's job. He he likes making the off of these head jokes. <laughs> Are you sure? There's a guy who likes chicken grease that loves those <laughs> he was a, He was a lot more inappropriate the last time. <laughs> Especially for the crown jewel. Man, I had a hard time editing that one. <laughs> Real hard. Did you notice how many times I had to put the SpongeBob SquarePants 10 seconds later thing in that? It was the cover for his stuff. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Comment down below. We'll see you guys down the road. And since I'm doing the outros now, I might as well do it. Until we see you guys next time, peace and chicken grease. <laughs> Gimmick infringement. <laughs> <laughs>